So I got a great email from one of my students the other day and he was basically saying that there was a library he wanted to partner with. He had asked them a bunch of questions um, and they came back with some answers, but the answers they gave him didn't give him 100% confidence that they were the right library for him, okay? And the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I get these emails from time to time and I think a lot of people are always looking for me to go, Jesse, this is what they told me. Should I jump in? Should I actually work with him? And even in their email, I can tell that they're not even really sure if they should be jumping in. So they're kind of wanting to outsource their lack of confidence to me so that I can maybe insource my confidence back into them so that they feel like, sure, Jesse said I should do it, so I feel better. And that's not what I'm in the business of doing. And I will never do that for anybody, okay? I'll never tell you that, well, I don't know much about the company and I don't know exactly how you feel about them. There's, it would be very irresponsible for me to just say, yeah, absolutely, go for it, it's no problem. That's not what I'm going to do, okay? So I'm sorry if I disappointed a few of you guys that had emailed me asking for that kind of advice or insight, okay? What I told this student, what I've told multiple students in the past, and kind of the reason why I needed to make a video is because I need to probably send a lot of you to this video in the future so that you know what my philosophy is and what you can do to empower yourself so you don't have to be sitting there um, uncertain about what, whether or not you should work with a library. In fact, at the end of this video, you will know exactly how to determine whether or not you will feel confident that you should submit your music to this library and give them a shot. So it doesn't matter what their issue is, okay? So with this particular comp uh, composer, he said that they only put, listed a couple of placements, but the owner was saying that they had done thousands of placements. So he's like, well, I'm only seeing a couple on your website. You're saying you're doing a thousand. I, I don't know, there's kind of a discrepancy there. Are you just not showing them all off on your website? Have you guys just been lazy on advertising yourselves or what's the discrepancy there? Um, you know, another question is, this uh, some libraries are composer owned, meaning that's actually a composer that runs the library. And so this uh, student's question was, well, if his music in the catalog as well, isn't he gonna be biased to just shop his own music? Like why would he even care about putting mine at the top of the stack for any opportunity when he could get the placements himself? I don't know if this is somebody that's gonna be my advocate. Maybe they're just wanting to shop their own music. Great question, right? Um, and there's, there's a very uh, many other um, issues and topics that I've been presented over the years, but there's just a couple that come to the top of my mind recently. So what I told him and what I'll tell you is the best way to get to the point where you are satisfied and more confident in whether way, either way you wanna go, whether you do wanna partner with them or you decide, eh, they're not, they're not the wrong one for me. The best thing to do is rather than even emailing me is emailing them, okay? and asking them these very important questions. You are not being a thorn in their side. You're not being um, an obnoxious person. You're not being an inconvenience to them by asking some common sense questions, especially like, how many placements do you guys have? Because your website shows a couple, you're saying thousands. Is there anything you can show me that's, that validates that thousands number that you have there? Or you know, if you are a composer and you're the one owning this library, what incentive, what, what assurance do I have that my tracks will be sort of pitched out there rather than just maybe the tracks that you've composed because obviously they're kind of your babies. You really care about them as I understand. So what assurance do I have that my tracks will be in, in contention and actually get out there? Um, or whatever your issue is, whatever the thing that you had a little bit of doubt about, you need to ask them directly, right? Here's why you need to ask them directly. Number one, if they do come back to you and say, you know what, dude, like stop bothering us. You're asking us too many questions. We don't need this. We can go work with anybody else. You're basically just like getting in our way or they ignore you, you know, as we just even worse. They just don't even respond to your questions. Well, there you go. Now you got your confidence. The confidence now comes in the form of this is not the right library for me because a legitimate library that cares about me, that wants to work with me, that's doing business above board is willing to answer a couple of easy common sense questions from a composer that wants to work with them. That's been the vast majority of experiences I've had and from everybody that I know, good libraries, the ones that care about their composers, answer questions and they're willing and happy to do it and they have no problem doing it, okay? So if you get a negative response or no response at all and then you feel like you have to keep like hounding them to get this answer, there you go. You don't need to work with that library because that's only gonna run into more problems in the future. That's only gonna last or result in you being heartbroken and ignored at a time in your life when you've been maybe giving a year or two of your work to this company. So cut your losses right then, cool. Now you got the confidence that this is something you can wash your hands of and just walk away from, right? But most libraries, the ones that are legit, which I think are most, they will respond to you. They'll say, hey, great questions. Here's how we will respond to that. Here's some proof. Maybe here's our here's a screenshot of our tune set showing you all of some of our placements. Um, here's my assurance that yes, while my 
Um, my tracks do obviously are important to me. Um, I'm obviously representing our entire catalog and I always regularly submit just the best track no matter who's composing, who, who composed the track. Maybe they can give you some sort of reassurance of how they've done that or maybe even show you, look at all these other composers I've gotten placements for that were above me that didn't that I didn't get the placements for. So you could actually you know have that conversation. But also remember with libraries that even if a composer has his music in the catalog, usually he's gonna be taking publishing from everybody's track, okay? So he's gonna be making income off of everybody's music. It's not just his own tracks that he makes income off of, but obviously if he owns the writers and the publishers, he does make double <laughs> the amount of income with his music. So it is a real concern. I'm not saying you should minimize that and just forget about it, but definitely put it out there. If it's something that's like, might make you kind of stay up at night and not you know, worry, wonder if this is really a library you should be spending that much time with, it's worth an email. It's worth a phone call. It's worth, I mean, this is your career. This is your music career we are talking about here, okay? So you got to just sort of like bite the bullet and ask the question and just put it out there and say, hey, you know, I don't mean to be rude. I really want to work with you guys and I really want to make sure that I feel confident about submitting a lot of work to you guys coming in the future because I'm in this for the long haul. So if we can just sort of get through a couple of these little points of confusion or doubt that I have, we're off to the races. Well, I, you, you guys will see a lot of great work from me. So if you frame it in that positive way that you're not there to be, you know, completely just skeptical of them and just thinking that they're, you know, screwing people over, but you're in the spirit of, we, I want to be on your team. I want to be on your side. Help me be on your side by just answering a couple of these pretty simple questions, okay? And then the more information you get from them, uh, it's either going to be satisfactory answers or non-satisfactory answers. And if they keep giving you non-satisfactory answers after you keep asking them over and over again, there's your confidence again. Probably not somebody you want to do business with. But if they answer them and you feel, you know what, that was reasonable, I can believe that, that gives me that sort of enough of a reason to move forward with this company, now you've got your confidence, okay? I think a lot of you guys are just scared. Are they just scared of just emailing and talking to library owners because you think that they hold, you know, the whole power of your your music career in their hands. And in some ways they do have a lot of influence, a lot of power, but you got a lot of power too. And you don't have to just give that away or pretend like you don't deserve to ask these questions and kind of be fully informed about who you're working with. So I would just hope that after this video, you feel a little bit more empowered, a little bit more encouraged that you can just answer, you can just ask a question. You can just send an email with a couple of questions. You can say, hey, can we get on the phone? I just wanna ask you a couple of things. This is business. This is what everybody does every single day, all the time when they're starting a new business relationship is they ask questions, they sign contracts, they wanna double check things, they have some you know doubts or concerns. This is called being a human being in the business world. So it's no different here in the sync licensing business. It's nothing special, it's nothing unique. So definitely just take the time, ask those questions and you will be very, very thankful you did in the long run.